Hi people, it's Archivist here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Starfighter Assault, which is just one of the modes within Star Wars Battlefront 2, which I think it's fair to say is one of the more controversial games of the year. So as Battlefront 2 is just so big, and more importantly constantly changing, I didn't want to do an all-encompassing review as I would normally do, but rather focus on the aspect of the game that I do genuinely enjoy. As a whole, this game is flawed without a doubt, but there are pockets of strong enjoyment and I don't think that is represented any other place in the game quite as much as with Starfighter Assault. So let's begin with a summary. What is Starfighter Assault? Well, at its core, it's an objective-based mode where you take control of a starfighter from the various factions across three different eras and you either take out as many starfighters as possible in the enemy team or you attack an objective. So those different eras are the Clone Wars, the original trilogy and the new trilogy. You've got the Clone Army, the Separatists, the Empire, the Rebellion, the Resistance and the First Order and you have their most iconic ships represented in fantastic detail here. And it's not just the playable ships that are great, but also the capital ships that are done very well. So these can be like the Venator class Star Destroyers in the Clone Wars, or the Resurgent class 1 in the new trilogy, which is a really awesome ship to try and blow up. And the objectives are usually just attack and defend, but there can be certain spins on this. So, for example, on the Ryloth map, you have to go in the last phase down into a reactor core, but in order to go into the reactor core, you first have to blow up the shields, which are keeping it locked down. So it's a multi-phased, multi-faceted game mode where it's not always just one thing going on. For example, if you're trying to defend, you can either just go after the enemy starfighters and take out as many as you can. And indeed, if you do well enough at this, you will win. But if you go after, say, an enemy cruiser, you can take out loads of the enemy reinforcements at once. At your disposal you have three different classes of ship and you also have hero ships. So let's begin with the regular ones first. You've got the Interceptor which is a really fast, nimble one, really good in dogfights but it doesn't have a lot of health and if you manage to take a lot of sustained fire you'll die very fast. You've also got the Bomber which is kind of the polar opposite of that. It's not very manoeuvrable at all but on the flip side it's got a fair amount of health it's pretty good at taking out objectives because it can shoot consistently for a long time without the weapons overheating. And then you've got the fighter class, which is my personal favourite, which is a very balanced one where it's got decent manoeuvrability and decent damage and decent health. And the abilities you have while in Starfighters can vary between factions, actually. So if you're playing as the clones and you have an ARC-170, which I really like, you have the ability to shoot behind you, although it's an automatic turret. So if you're being tangled in a dogfight, you can use it to shoot back. Now, it won't win you any fights. If someone's coming after you, the automatic turret won't take them out, but it's a nice way of some form of defending yourself. You also have torpedo attacks where you can lock onto an enemy starfighter and just fire off a missile. Though you'll find that these are relatively easy to dodge and I tend to reserve them for very slow moving objectives. So things like bombers or even enemy cruisers. Some starfighters have the ability to self repair like if they've got an R2 unit on board. Some have the ability to initiate an afterburner. And one of my favourite attacks is the ability to overcharge your turbo lasers to fire a bunch really, really fast. And although the cooldown is pretty hefty on it, you can take out interceptors in one load of blasts. And I think if you do a concentrated attack, you can pretty much take out a fighter as well. I think only bombers can withstand a full barrage. A really nice feature, at least I think, of Starfighter Assault is that you have bots. Now, bots get a bit of a bad rap sometimes because traditionally they're just used to fill in for players who have left the game, but here they play a very integral role. And as a result, you always feel like you have something to shoot at. So if you are a new player and you're not that great at taking out other enemy players, well, you can always focus on the bots, which do count towards taking out the total enemy cap, which is important. And sometimes they are an actual integral, real important part of the objective. And it just means that the flow of combat never slows down. Sometimes in the other modes in the game I find myself on a bit of a losing streak. I just don't seem to be able to get too many kills. And if I'm honest it's not too fun. But here even if I'm not really killing many other players because maybe I'm just having a bad day. 
it's very rare that I struggle to take out the bots, so it just keeps the flow going, and I think it means that, especially more casual gamers, kind of like myself, will really gravitate towards this game mode because it just makes it fundamentally more fun without in any way throwing off the balance. In terms of controls, the improvement over the first Battlefront from 2015 is night and day better. It's so much more precise, I never felt like it was wobbling around like TIE Fighters did in the original game. The sense of speed is just right, not too fast that you're out of control, but certainly not feeling slow. And especially if you're using an interceptor, your ability to precisely turn around and home in on them is also very easy and uh, very satisfying to do. Rather than in the first game where you would lock onto an enemy and then just have a really generous auto-aim attack, now you have to lead the target. So whenever you try to take on an enemy fighter, you'll see this red ring that is just in front of them, and this is where you need to shoot in order to hit your target. Although this can disappear if you're fighting a bomber, which I believe have the ability to essentially make themselves very difficult to target. It's not they can't be hit, but you don't have the ability to get that aim assist and the reticle appear so you can easily target them. You can zoom in a little bit while you're aiming, which also I think has a bit of aim assist involved as well because I found the acceleration change a bit. Uh, but I tend to avoid this if I can because it also hurts your own manoeuvrability. And speaking of manoeuvrability, the, uh, the roles you could do in the first game are gone, which at first I worried about because I thought that was a necessary mechanic to avoid missiles. But because the importance of missiles has changed so much and the fact that you can pretty much do your own barrel rolls and manoeuvres now anyway means that I don't miss it at all. In fact, I'm glad it's gone because it's not so much that very typical formulaic form of one guy fires a missile, another dodges, it's done, it's over. Now it's more complex where uh, some players will be very adept at moving around and dodging missiles while others um, may not be just through lack of practice. As you play the objective and destroy other starfighters, you'll gain battle points. And these can be used to buy temporarily, albeit, the hero fighters in the game. And I think these are surprisingly well balanced. I didn't think that any particular hero starfighter was overwhelmingly powerful, although don't get me wrong, you can go on pretty decent kill streaks with them. Nothing though compared to the previous game where Slave 1 and the Millennium Falcon were just like mini raid bosses. They could take so much damage and they dealt out so much damage that it just felt like uh, there was no point going up against them unless you had a whole load of starfighters with you. In this, especially some of the weaker starfighters like Yoda's ship um, can go down exceptionally fast if they take sustained damage. Admittedly, and you might see some gameplay of this, the Millennium Falcon has a lot of health, it can take a lot of damage. I was following one um, in a fighter and unleashing a bunch of uh, lasers at it, but it, it just survived through it. However, on the flip side of this, it's just not manoeuvrable at all. If you're in the Millennium Falcon, you will really struggle to dodge anything. So although you have a lot of health, you're also going to be taking a lot of hits, and it's balanced quite well that way. I find the Millennium Falcon is best for objective play because it can do a lot of sustained damage at one place without having to do much manoeuvring away from other starfighters because it can take the hit. But on the flip side of this you have something like Darth Maul Scimitar which is pretty fragile but it's also very manoeuvrable, it can do a lot of damage very quickly although its weapons also overheat fast. But it has the added ability to go invisible which I find quite useful. So if you've taken quite a bit of damage, you can go invisible and then your health will regenerate and then you can strike from the shadows, so to speak. And uh, regenerating health is a nice feature as well. I don't believe that was in the last game where your health could come back without picking up something on the battlefield. I think it was in the first game. You had to fly into a health pickup. Now your health will just regenerate and it regenerates even faster if you have an R2 unit or BB-8 if you're playing as Poe Dameron. I think the heroes are just so much better done in Battlefront 2 than they were in the first game, but I do have one minor complaint, and I think 
this really depends on how much of a Star Wars fan you are as to how much this will bother you. It's the fact that you can have heroes in eras where it doesn't make sense for them to be there. So I'll just show you a quick clip here. I'm playing on Kamino and I'm playing as Luke Skywalker during the Clone Wars defending a Venator class Star Destroyer. Doesn't make any sense at all. In terms of the immersion factor, this is quite damaging in fact. And I'm surprised they left it in here because the game goes to such a length to immerse you in the battles, both in terms of the graphics, the detail on the ships, the voiceovers from the various commanders, only to shatter that immersion by throwing Kylo Ren into the Clone Wars or by throwing Darth Vader into the First Order. Doesn't really make sense and I would have gladly have uh, taken the hit of not being able to play as many heroes as I wanted uh, if it meant it was more canonical, more believable in terms of what was going on. In terms of map balance, I think they did a pretty good job here. There isn't a map in the game where I start playing it on a particular side and think there's no way we can win because this map is so out of whack, you know. There's no way that I can win because the odds are stacked against me. There's definitely a few maps where I feel like it's a lot harder to win than the other side. So, for example, on the Resurgence class Star Destroyer map, if you're the ones attacking, it's a pretty hard thing to take down, especially during the final phase, but it can be done. I have beaten it a few times, but I'll definitely say when I play that map, the defenders win more often than not. And also it means that you need to get a team together that's all willing to go after the objectives. If everyone wants to destroy enemy starfighters, then nothing's going to get done. You'll have to rely exclusively on the bots and yeah, it, it can be a bit of a pain without a doubt. And this kind of leads me into another issue I have here where um, this is only a multiplayer mode, but I really believe they could have implemented this into Arcade. There are tons of people out there who just want to experience the immersive nature of this game and want to enjoy Starfighter Assault without necessarily having to go online. And I don't see why it was left out of Arcade mode when it can clearly function in such an arena. I would hope that later down the line we'll see it implemented into Arcade, similar to the first game where the Starfighter mode didn't come into single player until later, but uh, it's a, a slightly baffling omission considering how well suited it would be to split screen. So with regards to the Star Cards, what would have been, and might be again the pay to win aspect, uh, these don't break the experience, they don't ruin it for me, but I don't see why they're here. And I'll keep it brief as to why, because we've all heard about this already. If someone has played the game for many, many hours, they have naturally already become more skillful. That should be their ability to compete. Why also give them a stat boost bonus? Now, for that player, it's very nice, it's very rewarding, but if you're a new player who comes in maybe a year from now, you have to deal with the fact that not only your Starfighter is weaker than theirs inherently, objectively, it is worse, you also have to deal with the fact that um, you are less skillful and you're still learning. So maybe a year from now, even more so than now, this system will be immensely alienating to new players. But that aside, because it doesn't, as I say, ruin the experience, it just smears it, it needlessly reduces it. I will get on to what I think is a supreme advantage of Starfighter Assault, and that's on the visuals. So I've already mentioned how amazing the detail is for the various ships, but just the general appearance, the visuals for this, particularly how the sun will beam down upon your ship and cast god rays, it looks absolutely stunning. I mean, there is no word quite strong enough to express how much I enjoy the visuals of this. To someone who simply enjoys nice graphics on a video game, you'll like it. But if you're a Star Wars fan, you'll be in love here. Because all these ships that you know and love from the films are recreated with loving care and attention. Which, again, is why it's quite annoying that sometimes you'll be in the Clone Wars and you'll see Rey and Chewbacca flying in the Millennium Falcon. They did so much right to get the look of these battlefields down and the attention to detail, and then they do something kind of crazy and out of whack there. But yeah, as I say, the graphics are amazing, and the fact that it also on consoles runs at 60 FPS, and of course PC if you have the hardware for it, is just a lovely bonus, and really adds to the, the visceral nature of the combat. 
So these have been my thoughts on Starfighter Assault, one of the game modes within Star Wars Battlefront 2. If I have the time, I would love to cover some more of the game. And as always, people, thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Victory secured. Ambush successful.